How do I feel telling people about my dyslexia? Um, I don't know, quite anxious because I don't know how they're going to react to me. I don't know how they're going to start, if they're going to start thinking, oh, she's a bit of an idiot, you know, I better leave her alone. <laughs> The most common difficulty with people with dyslexia is they can read, they can write, they can spell, but just incredibly laboriously, you know, with a lot of effort and energy. First they learn to understand what the condition is, so they learn what their particular variety of dyslexia is. So for example, it may be to do with their visual processing, the way they, they're seeing the text. So we can work on strategies, perhaps wearing glasses, or maybe wearing, using coloured overlays that stop the print jumping around and makes life easier that way. For another student that may not be a problem at all, it may be auditory processing, it may be that the way they hear sounds is not uh, matching with what they're reading and so there we need practice in phonological processing. Other people may find it very difficult to read but not so difficult to write, which is kind of odd, and other people find it easy to read but impossible to write or spell. It would affect their learning in respect of um, sometimes they may sit back and because perhaps they don't understand or they can't complete the work quickly enough, uh, they'll fall behind on deadlines, they'll get lower grades, they may fail the course. There's no such thing as a cure for dyslexia. It's a condition, it's a neurological condition in the brain that's there from birth and um, it'll be there when you die. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, and it won't particularly change. So if someone was severely dyslexic, they will remain severely dyslexic. Some basic tests that you, uh, uh, you can go through uh, to try and figure out what's going on. They tend to be things like the dictation, so you can see how they misspell words, um, memory tests, because one of the key things about dyslexia is it's short-term memory and working memory tends to be very weak. For example, instead of essay writing, we'll give an option of giving a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation. So there, you know, you just, you just have to remember keywords or look at keywords to prompt you into your conversation, into your presentation, rather than having to sit down and stress about an essay. We use assistive technologies so that we have text readers on here, a program called Text Help on the computer, which you can put any text on there, like from Google or Wikipedia or somewhere, and it'll read it out to you. So that you don't have to, what that does is it makes it less of a strain when you're reading. Uh, the positive thing from having dyslexia is thinking outside of the box, because I think because you can't process like certain information like other people, you pick up on things quite quickly. So I picked up on editing quicker than my classmates did. I was able to do things a lot more quicker, but when it came to the practical stuff, I mean the, the writing and all of that, I wasn't so good. But when it came to hands-on, actually getting your hands stuck in and doing it, it was really good for me. I always used to talk as much as I can to describe things, you know, so writing it down, I could describe how I see things and colours. If that didn't work, I'll make a collage or a mood board on my laptop. And I think um, I see a lot of stuff in terms of music, I, I see it in pictures as much as I can, um, you know, but I always, yeah, I'm a very visual person, really. But now I've started to kind of go into the whole theory side of describing images in your head on written form, you know, and it's very hard for a dyslexic person, but, you know, it's a challenge that you got to face one day, and that's why I'm tackling, you know, I'm, ta I'm tackling it very well. <laughs> <laughs>